we have this uh, story from The Guardian, which um, I respect. I respect this story. No doomsday bunker, not a single gun. If the U.S. really is heading for civil war, I'm stuffed, says Arwa Madawi. The super rich are preparing to ride at the apocalypse by their underground swimming pools. Ordinary Americans have bought another 20 million firearms. And me, I have a broom and a butter knife. I, I have tremendous respect for her recognizing yeah. everyone else is going out and buying guns and she won't. Yeah. The best part is when she says she'll last a week. She says, how long do you think you would survive if everything went to hell? Civil war erupted, institutions crumbled, and there was absolutely nowhere safe in the world left to run. Me, I'd give myself one week, maybe two. Maybe two? That's generous, lady. Yeah. yeah. I would like to think that I'm a tough survivor type, but the last time I went camping, I forgot to bring a sleeping bag and sobbed <laughs> myself to sleep. So on balance, I would have to admit that I'm not. I did have a brief period this year when, in a fit of madness, I thought I'd take up urban farming and become as self-sufficient as possible with a scrap of garden in Philadelphia. That seemed to go well until I proudly sent my mom a photo of the luscious berry bushes I'd cultivated, and she informed me that they were poisonous weeds and I should get rid of them immediately. Oh, no. So yeah, I don't give myself great odds on surviving the apocalypse. Uh, I, res I respect that. I, I, I actually yeah. respect that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, but look, I don't want this lady to get hurt. I don't want her. I want her to survive. I want her to Agreed. understand. And maybe this is the first step in realizing that mm -hmm. the world is not some fancy, beautiful Skittle and rainbow bubble where you can go around and do whatever the hell you want, that there are real dangers and we're kept safe by a military and policing apparatus. There's something to being not maybe not attacked by a wild animal. I'm not encouraging that anyone gets attacked by a wild animal. When an animal comes at you, like I'm watching videos of like a wild boar attacking someone, you realize you, I saw this world wants you dead. Yeah. Everything about the universe <laughs> is out there. To Nature destroy. is metal. Right. Yeah. Space will kill you if you go out there too far. <laughs> you say the universe wants you yes, dead. Yes, it, it wants to explode you in its vacuum yeah. if you get near it. Um, 100%, yep. We're, we're up against a, a mountain of, of terror, and, and but we've lost that realization being in these cities all compacted. I, it was Canada, right? The wild boar thing? I didn't know where it was from. It was, it was, a girl it was somewhere where they're, only no, allowed, where they're only allowed to have three was, rounds yeah. or yeah. something. It Italy, Italy, Italy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And the boar comes at him. It's a, uh, is it a guy it or It was a hunter? high voice. I thought it was a woman. but I, and, and you see the boom, hit, miss, boom, miss, point blank, miss, and then just start beating with the gun. Good uh. Lord. It's like, well, now people ask, why do you need 30 rounds? Because that boar would not have been a threat to the individual. And <sighs> boars can destroy you. I'm yeah. very I, lucky. I, I grew up hawk hunting, so I know the dangers of, oh, yeah. of wild boar, especially even bar hawk down in the state of Florida and I mean you can get boar hogs down there that are 300 400 pounds you know four and a half six inch tush and you know they basically I saw where you know people would blood out because they'll essentially grab them right between you know kind of the crotch and sever the femoral artery and I mean yep. you, you know you're stuck in the woods sitting there bleeding out behind the pines and palmettos so one it's, the, it's a real risk one of the funniest things I remember was when uh, I had a friend who went I think it was in Arizona and they told me that they were locked down. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? They're like, javelina spotting. Mm. And I was like, a what? And they're like, javelina. I'm like, what is that? And they sent me a picture of this little <laughs> pig. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, that? that's why everyone's forced inside. And it's like, yeah, those things will yep. destroy them. I'm like, they're, how big are they? Like the, the little wild pigs out there in the desert or something like that? Dude, I, it's, I, at, at, the, at, at least those kids in college understood like those little wild pigs or whatever they are. Is that what they're called? Havelina? Am I pronouncing it right? I, I, yeah. I honestly have never heard of it. Never heard of those little pigs. Yeah. 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 Havelina. I've, I've got a lot of compassion for animals and humans being part of that animal kingdom. But like when I had a, a raccoon. Peccary. I went near a raccoon and I was like, okay, I'm going to use my magic on this thing and, oh. and be kind oh, with the oh raccoon. Boy. It was in a cage, oh, but boy. it screamed mm. like it wanted to kill me. And I realized I got a, the viciousness in me came out. I was like, uh, that thing can die. Yeah. I will eradicate all raccoons. <laughs> If that's so, a danger to my survival, peccary is that peccaries, yeah, yeah peccaries. I guess you know. Cute, so, so cute. Look oh how cute God. the little baby is. Oh. I know, right? That thing would probably bite you and give you rabies or who knows what. You see that <laughs> so video of the lady getting attacked by the fox? Yeah, yes. what was that? Yeah, yes. Rabbit so, fox. so I just want to say, you know, we've done a bunch of discussions over the years talking about, you know, would would liberals survive the apocalypse? And it's funny when I hear people try and make the argument that it's not the case that liberals wouldn't survive. And I'm uh -huh. like, dude, the people in cities would be eating each other in like a week. Mm -hmm. She says she'd, she'd last a week, maybe two. Dude, when there's no water, what do you think people are going to do? Yeah. It's like drink about ocean the, water for sure. Some people will. They'll drink yeah. the river water and then die faster. Yeah, it'll be quick. Yeah. Wow, man. Water, yeah. man. They said Between water is the, the new gold. Dysentery and all the other things, not understanding how to boil water, not understanding how to 
you know, check things. I mean, yeah, I, look, I, I don't care how many survival shows you try to watch and, you know, The Last Frontier or Alone. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't have proper survival skills, you don't have them. Yeah, boiling water will kill microbes, but it doesn't get rid of, like, a lot of stuff. Like and it's very hard to and boil water if there's no natural gas or there's no, you, 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 your stove doesn't work. And, so, and, do these people know how to make a fire? a fire? And you know? maintain a fire. Yeah, do they have any, any idea how to start a fire without, uh, well, I'll just get a lighter. Go to the CVS. <laughs> there is no CVS. <laughs> Do they know how to hide a fire from people that want your fire? Well, th this is where people you start asking, so have you ever built a friction fire? Oh. Do you understand you know, how to build fires in different elevations and in different climates yep. and how to maintain that yep. and how to transfer? Because you, know, you can't just build a fire and think that you're going to live in one place forever. Maybe you're having to transport a fire. How do you do that? How do you tender? How do you... I, I, I would love to see, I would really love to see some of these people who have grown up in these downtown you know uh, metropolitan areas where they've just always had something at the tip of their finger yep. live for a week or even two as she said oh my well, gosh if their uber eats driver is five minutes late they get zero <laughs> stars and they and they send raging instagram like this is absurd and they want you know like you think what they, build a fire imagine yeah. the people who i grew think, up in the south so for us it was like my grandfather taught us to live in the woods and so the, the people who think words are violence yeah. They'll be out in the streets in an apocalyptic scenario, and there's going to be some dude with a gun who's hungry, and he's going to, he's, th these people probably, many of them won't get to encounter words at all, but how will they respond to someone actually grabbing them? Yeah. Just like fall to the ground. <laughs> the how many of them will <laughs> yell for the police? Yeah. If, if, oh, seeing, right away. if seeing Ben Shapiro in the concert oh hall gosh, made you nice. like literally shake with fear, get ready when it's a bear. Right, yeah, and, you don't, and you don't have, you have no idea how to use a gun. Like, maybe you have a gun. <laughs> Do you have any idea how to load it, how to fire it? The apocalypse <laughs> happens, the cities are wiped out, and Ben Shapiro's already created a small working city. <laughs> <laughs> and then the liberals are all outside the walls, screaming how, how terrified they are of him, and they're telling stories, they're, t you know. It's like, and then the people who aren't insane will just knock on the door and be like, good sir, I'm looking for a job and food. And it's like, we are in need of someone of your specialty. Come on in. And they're outside screaming, terrified of Ben Shapiro. Yeah. <laughs> but so, so this is what I was saying earlier. I was like, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like, I think I would survive. Um, for one, I'm out of the city. Mm. We're in the middle of nowhere. And I've started learning and, uh, and, 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 you know, setting myself up in a way that I would last longer than two weeks. We have emergency food. We have bug out locations. We've got solar stuff. And uh, I've been reading a bit. Obviously, we have the chickens. But I'm not going to pretend that I'd be better off than the average, say, Trump supporter who just mm. grew up in the country. They know what food they can already eat outside. Like the first, we have the pawpaw out here, the, the hillbilly banana, they call it. it I, I didn't even know where it was. Last year, I'm like, I see these little pawpaws. I'm like, looks like there's three of them. Then pawpaw season hit, and there's 50,000 of them everywhere, like on the ground, literally. I'm like, there's just food for days. Yeah. And I, I had no idea. And the people out here were laughing because they're like, we know all about it, what you can, where the berries are, what kind of berries you eat, because they grew up around it, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So here's my question for you guys. How long do you think you'd last? Let's say society breaks down right now. We can, you know, this, this liberal lady, she's self-aware, but what do you think, Corey? I mean, I think I could sustain fine on just my own survival skills and the fact that I have sustainable food. I have, you know, the ability to go ahead and have my own water sources and not to mention that I own a 2,000 acre facility that's well armed. So if I really needed to, and it comes down to survival and the fittest, I'll take what I need. Very yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the point. It's like, it's not even necessarily about what you know, but it's about what you currently have. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I have currency and currency is not money. That's what people have to understand. Currency is things like ammunition currency is things yeah. like food for for trade currency is things like whiskey or you know people have to understand that in a society where currency as far as you know it has changed now it becomes who is the most you know the largest survival or the largest you know kind of provider and store of goods i mean this is why she talks about the doomsday bunkers and the preppers you know people make fun of preppers but i can tell you right now that during the unconstitutional lockdowns our family never did without it's not just that Preppers are having fun. Yeah. You know, we, we, I've, I watched these videos about preppers, and they always try to show you the craziest guy who's like, the wars are coming, so I got beans. Like, that's that's not real. The real videos are really great where it's a guy like, oh, yeah, we have, here's where we store emergency food. Mm -hmm. We've got the animals over there. Here's where we, It's basically homesteading, mm. and we have, like, a you know long storage. And they're having a good time. It's purpose. They're, they're, they have purpose. They're, they're, they're doing what they mm -hmm. love. They enjoy Like, we have the chickens. The chickens are fun. Yeah. What concerns me is when people's purpose becomes defending against an apocalypse, because then it's almost like they need the apocalypse in order to fulfill their purpose. I don't mm -hmm. want to take it that far. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask. 
if you were in a city, let's say you're on a business trip in New York, you're in Manhattan, right in the middle, and then all of a sudden just everything just goes off, you would you would still be completely fine. And that's that's kind of the point, right? Well, yeah, because my, my initial instinct wouldn't be to sustain myself in that city. It would be to get back to where I have all my supplies and, and, and all my sustainment. For items. sure, but I just mean like basic combat skills. Yeah, I mean, basic, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it, it's not like we sit in a, you know, kind of empty solitude, you know, building that has no food whatsoever. I mean, you have enough to sustain you for a number of days. Clearly, my big thing would be pack what I can, get out, get my way, a means of transportation and get to where I have the most sustainability, which is my own facility. The funny thing is so many of these liberals would be like, they'd go outside and be like, okay, everybody, let's talk about what our plan is. Mm. And they would just sit, sit around. It's like, you realize there's no water in this place. The water pressure is gone. There's no water. It would be a There's lot of no people conversation. looking for who to serve. Well, I, I think for a while you just have an increase in criminality, right? So you just have the stealing and looting of basic goods or essentially the 2020 mostly, uh, what is it? Summer Peace, of love. Mostly peaceful, summer of love, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you'd essentially just have that. You'd have rampant increase in criminality. You'd have a lot of theft. You'd have murders. You'd have all these different things going on. But eventually when those supplies run out and there is no workforce and no one is actually reproducing anything, then you'd have to go into true survival skills. Well, and I, like what goods. You, I like what you said about currency because I did a thread the other day on, on, on social about the coming Great Depression, which I think is, is inevitable, assuming the government doesn't collapse, right? Assuming, well, I'm not talking apocalypse, I'm just talking about like, a, like the Great Depression of our, of our grandparents of old. Um, and I like what you said about currency because I was telling people to start keeping big supplies of, of cash. Because the black markets will pop up everywhere. And people like, not necessarily Tim, but people like Tim who have extra chickens will create a black market for eggs because it, we're in a Great Depression. And but see, people cash start, won't be the currency, though. That's the whole thing. It'll well, have if to be the things government like hasn't gold destroyed. bullions, and it'll have to be things like fuel. But my, 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 my point was, it could be. But my point was that, though, that they're not going to take your credit card. You're they're right. not going to take your oh, visa. They're 100%. not going to take a check. They're not going Here's to. The best part. They're not going to take your gold. Yeah, no, they're, they're going to need something that they can easily change. That's assuming the government hasn't collapsed, which I don't think it, it's going to. I don't think we're headed towards a, a towards an apocalypse. Well, I do think we're headed towards a depression, though. Mm -hmm. It's not just that. It's that even if the U.S. collapsed, other governments would have to collab collapse for, for something like gold to lose its value. Yeah, right. in, in the event that the U.S. goes into chaos in their civil war, there's still going to be people who say, hey, that gold is valuable in Turkey. That gold is valuable in Europe. So I will take it from you and bring it there. There's, mm. there's still going to be trade going on. I just think that... Uh, in the event of a real civil war, what people need to understand is that it's not these regular liberal types. This is what I hear a lot from people. They're like, ah, I think it was Bill um, Bill Burr. He's the comedian, right? Not yeah. Bill Burr. Mm -hmm. He was saying something recently on, I think it was on trigonometry, and it's, it shows you the danger <laughs> of ignorance. He's a funny guy. He's a mm -hmm. good actor. I respect his, his, his work, is. but not his political <laughs> positions because— right. You know, he's, he said on Joe Rogan, he's like, look, Joe, I just put on the, the TV. They tell me to wear a mask. I wear it or I don't. What, uh, two weeks later, I'll turn it on. I'll do what they tell me. Hmm. That's the kind of attitude where he says, he's, he said on, this, uh, on, on trigonometry, regular people don't care about this stuff. You go out, nobody's talking about it. And that's, that's, that's ignorance of history. If I go out, I went, I went down to like Strasbourg and Front Royal the other day. Yo, I'm in MAGA country. Of course, no one's fighting each other. They all live next to each other and have the same politics. Mm. You go into a city, it's, it's woke country. Everybody's got the flags. Of course, no one's mm. fighting each other. I mean, they're still fighting each other, to be honest. Mm. But not always, because they're next to each other. It's the geographical differences where people are spreading apart from each other. And what happens is, in any major conflict, it is a small minority of the people who are leading the fighting. And when you have the president, Joe, uh, Donald Trump just called Joe Biden enemy of the state. Joe Biden called Trump supporters extremists and then tried walking it back later and then doubled down and said, mm. you know, the funny thing is when he says MAGA Republicans are a threat and so are their policies, you know, you know, he's talking about Trump supporters because they're the ones who are pushing those policies and supporting those people. You have the highest levels of government. There is a conflict happening. It doesn't matter what regular people are thinking or doing. It's that law enforcement. The, 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 the military apparatus are currently being pointed at each other. Sooner or later, you get what Matt, Matt Taibbi calls that arrest this man moment where the cars rush to the police station. Two guys jump out and point, arrest that man at each other. And then the police basically decide whose side are they on. That's when you figure out who's fighting who. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. 
And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.